Hello, everybody, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Betsy Berkemer. I'm CEO of 5050 Women on Boards and delighted to welcome you here this morning. Uh, we are a nonprofit 501c3 organization committed to advancing women in the pipeline to corporate board positions. We do this through quarterly and annual research, of course, board readiness workshops, events uh, throughout the globe, and advocacy efforts. So our goal is to have 50% of the corporate board seats held by women and 20% of all corporate board seats held by women of color. Today, for our conversation and celebration, we are joined by two of our 50 Women to Watch for Boards Selection Committee and seven of our finalists. And the 50 Women to Watch for Boards initiative aims to assist companies seeking diverse talent by spotlighting board ready women who have yet to serve on a company board. And in today's discussion, we'll explore the importance of diversity and inclusion with the board of directors, as well as what drives our finalists to serve on corporate boards and how our 50 women to watch for boards campaign will reverse the lack of diversity on, by the way, there are 457 companies in the, in the Russell 3000 that still only have one or no women on board. So our campaign is definitely going to help them um, make that decision. So please help me welcome Eileen Chang Britt, uh, one of our selection committee members. And I, I, Irene is a seasoned board member. She serves on Bright House Financial and Victoria's Secret Boards and many, many others. Good morning, Irene. Let's see. And then uh, also another selection committee member is Maria Risa, and Maria is the CEO of Bolsa International called Biva in Mexico City. And it, under her le leadership, Biva has grown to be uh, an uh, outstanding uh, stock exchange in Mexico City with uh, 19 billion US dollars in funding companies. And she's recognized in 2001 as the most innovative company in Mexico. So welcome, Maria. Thank you, Betsy. Nice, nice to be here. Thank you. Well, first, I'd like to ask Irene and Maria a couple of questions before we introduce our finalists with us today. Um, Irene, could you speak to the importance of diversity on corporate boards and why this effort is uh, so meaningful to companies? Yeah, absolutely. I was so thrilled to be part of this because I truly believe in diversity, not for just the sake of um, gender and ethnic diversity, but really about how we as board members can represent the voice of our customers, right? And so if you can't connect these days, especially with the voice of your customer, it is, uh, it's harder from a business strategy standpoint. So there's a truly a, a business case for, for diversity. And we've believed that for a long time, but it's just come to a crescendo now. And the importance of this kind of program, this is this, this um, project that you initiated, Betsy, is so incredibly deep because what it does is it brings action to the thought, right? So the concept is good, but you, as you've always done, have brought action to it with something very, very tangible. So I just want to thank you as a broad-based board member uh, for this type of list. Well, Irene, it's been great to be a friend of yours for so many years and all you've done for women on boards and uh, you yourself are an example and a role model of uh, so that women can follow your footsteps. And Maria, you have a great influence on companies in Mexico and worldwide where you invest. Uh, how, how do you feel about diversity on corporate boards? First of all, uh, Betsy, I will just follow on Irene's comments. It was amazing. I am so honored uh, to have been invited as part of the of the jury of um, of, of this initiative, um, and and testify firsthand the outstanding level of women that participated. And I, I do believe this initiative will profoundly push push uh, boundaries in the in the board members selection criteria. And, and that will profoundly have an impact on companies uh, across the world. So I am very honored. I, I do think um, diversity is crucial for companies. Uh, diversity gen generates value, uh, which comes from having different perspectives, looking at a common problem or goal, uh, allowing a more complete analysis of the 
and opportunities the company faces, having a broader understanding of the customer base, as Irene, Irene said, and the environment the company operates in, and of course, challenge the status quo. And I think these women that we see here as finalists uh, will impact directly on those companies uh, that they will serve uh, as, as, as board members. I am I'm truly um, um, uh, completely um, um, uh, you know, convinced of, the, of this. And, um, and what, I, what I see, um, Irene, is that um, um, I was really, really impressed on the other candidates as well. And I, I really wanted to tell them to not um, uh, give this away on the country, keep pushing, keep de developing their, uh, your skills and, and apply for next opportunities. There will be many and we need many companies uh, uh, and to, 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 to challenge the diversity in many companies. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Gracias. Uh, it's uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, the 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 initiative that we started. I I must give credit to our chief operating officer Heather Spillsbury and our team at Fifty Fifty Women on Boards. Uh, this campaign was her idea, and uh, it certainly has uh, given us a great deal of. Uh, uh, not only visibility, but uh, engagement with uh, women. There were four, nearly 400 women who went through the application mm -hmm. nomination process, and we'll be doing this every year. So um, there are many opportunities in the future for women to uh, nominate themselves. And uh, it was not an easy process, as I'm sure our, our finalists today would attest, but uh, certainly worthwhile. And it was very difficult with a very disciplined uh, scoring process to choose the finalists. And uh, as Irene and uh, Maria said, uh, it was um, a disciplined methodology with the scoring process that uh, that tried to choose the, the the top 50, but there were so many who were so close. We even have a, a second list of uh, 50 semi semi-finalists, but all were terrific. So let me introduce you to uh, the, the, those finalists we have on uh, our show today. And uh, our producer will, will bring them up. We have Isaura Gaeta from the Bay Area in California, Regina Garcia Cuellar from um, from Mexico City, and Chandy Ghosh uh, from uh, Colorado, Vonda Huss from North Carolina, Chandra McCormick from Dallas, and Nicole Reich from Mexico, and Michelle Ryder from Dallas. So we have quite a cross section from the from the country and from Mexico. And our the campaign, the initiative was open to candidates from Toronto and Mexico as well as the U.S. wide. So uh, you've you've met them. We we in this short period of time on the LinkedIn conversation, we cannot give bios for everybody, but you can find them on on LinkedIn, and you'll see how impressive they are. But let me ask then, um, why don't we start with uh, Isara, and tell us, uh, you know, what what inspirational goals and passion and experience that you brought to uh, seeking a corporate board position. Why did you want to be involved? Thank you so much for the question. So I consider myself a servant leader, and my aspirational goals would be to supply astute governance and oversight on a corporate board, so I can support stakeholder interests and company growth. I have four decades of industry experience in technology, manufacturing, operations, and governance. And I think that'll help me formulate good questions that can improve the robustness of the enterprise's risk management process. Well, you know, that's critically important because research shows and research by many independent sources, uh, KPMG and, and EY and, uh, and also the uh, um, the original re research by Credit Suisse showing that when there are three women on a corporate board, they actually have a voice. So our goal is 50%. And uh, we don't think that's outrageous, do we? No. <laughs> so Regina, would you add this as a conversation? Please uh, tell us why you um, are, are passionate about serving on corporate boards and what you would bring to that experience. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, my throughout my career, I've changed a lot of different sectors and a lot of different industries. I've been in the 
academic uh, sector, in the public sector, in, in the private sector, through different industries. And throughout my career, my, my, the way I worked and, and, and my passion is always to find solutions to complex situations. Through analysis, through data, looking at which ways to, to, to face these challenges. And I think that this approach could be very valuable in any public uh, or, or, or private board because it's it's a different approach and, and as maria was telling uh in the, in the beginning i think that having a diverse board with different experience is very enriching to the company to to sort out all of the, the complexities that they are facing very much so and michelle would you add to the conversation and anyone else please this is a conversation and a celebration so jump in on on any point michelle yeah um so I have a really deep background, but I think throughout my career, just being able to dive deep on, on healthcare and regulatory issues, marketing issues, women, um, issues around women and people of colors and bringing that perspective to the table. I've done that my entire career. I'm looking forward to doing that on a board in a, in a way that also respects the need for growth the, the need to understand technology, um, and then the need to understand how to untangle and create balance. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what I bring to a board, and I'm really excited to serve. Well, um, what is your current uh, your current role uh, where you are? Yeah. So um, most recently, I was at Amazon, and I helped with the launch of a, a healthcare digital health technology. Um, that is still thriving. And, um, but recently I've taken a role as a interim chief marketing officer for a, a healthcare company focused on behavioral health for, for healthcare workers, which is a huge um, academic. 50% um, of all doctors report feeling burnt out and stressed. And that stigma um, with doctors not wanting to reveal that and be the strong um, person when they're their patients is a stigma that we need to break down and um, accept them and understand how important they are um, and how important their mental health is. Very valuable, very valuable experience. Well, thank you for that. And uh, Vonda, if you would, uh, where are you from once again? And what is your, what's your driving, uh, your driving passion to serve on a court report? Sure. Thank you, Betsy. So I am from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm the CHRO at Bright House Financial. And I'm one of those people who has been so very fortunate to have four women uh, board members on our company board. And it truly has been an opportunity to have wonderful role models. And to your point earlier, watch women have a voice. And um, I couldn't be happier about that. You know, the the role of a board member is so interesting because it's not only a fiduciary and governance role, but it's also an opportunity to um, bring a variety and diversity of thought and to support a management team to be very successful, which is sort of why I got into the CHR role the HRO role in the first place. Um, that's sort of what I do on a daily basis is try to help a management team be successful and prof profitable as a company. So, um, you know, I, I feel like everybody spends their entire career having different experiences and learning. And if you can then share that um, in a board seat to further um, help other companies, I think that's a, a wonderful opportunity. True. And of course, um, I didn't mention that uh, having three women on boards, the research shows the companies are more profitable, more productive, and the workforce is better engaged. So these are business reasons to have more women on corporate boards. And Chandra McCormick um, has joined us. And would you, would you give us your, your, your driving factors for wanting to get on board, Chandra? Well, thank you, Betsy. Thank you, everyone. Like the rest of this esteemed panel, I, I genuinely want to inspire the next generation of leaders being sensitive to the value of diversity and that multidimensional thought leadership that that brings, including women of color, personally supporting initiatives to advance the triple bottom line, profits plus people in the planet, 
And um, uh, as I'm Chandra, which begins with a C, I'm also a CFO. I'm adept at cybersecurity and worked primarily over my 30 year career in the CPG sector. So I introduced myself with those four C's. Um, and board service really does feel like a natural extension of my career journey. I too want to advance future management teams that are more diverse. And I think with my experience that I can, I can do that. And I think that there's a mandate. I think the mandate is strong for diverse women with the skills to enter the boardroom, including in finance. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, by the way, in, in our city events, uh, uh, both Chandra and Michelle are from Dallas. We'll be introducing you at our Dallas event. Uh, we have 20 events around the globe. In, uh, in the in the fall, uh, September, October, and November, and uh, they're going to be delighted to continue to uh, uh, generate visibility for all of you so that the uh, corporate boards and nominating and governance committees see you. Uh, Nicole, tell us more about you and what, what drives you. Uh, well, thank you, everybody. <clears throat> delighted to be here. I think uh, what drives me really is after having what I consider a very blessed career, it's time to contribute back. And I'm very, very interested in pushing diversity, particularly in Mexico. Marisa will not let me lie that it's a difficult task in Mexico. And I think it really needs to be pushed from the top. And I'm very interested in showing that Latin women, Mexican women can be in US, international, European boards. And I think basically I have two interests. One is to bring and give back all my financial expertise, management, leadership expertise that I've had gained through the years. And the second one, frankly, is also to continue to learn. Because I think also when you participate in a board, you learn a lot and that is very important. And I think we have like an obligation uh, to be role models for the next generation, to push from the top. And I think getting to important boards in Europe, in the US, in Mexico, and in general, it's a way to give back, to continue to learn, and to provide role models for the young generations uh, that need it. No, we didn't have it. It was tougher. Let's hope it's easier for the next generations. Uh, so I really, really interested in pushing this, and particularly to push it from Mexico, no? Because I think uh, um, we have a certain reputation for machismo. Uh, so that's yeah. basically it. Well, and Nicole and Regina, we do have a Mexico City event as well uh, coming up in October. So we'll be seeing you there and Maria will be there, of course. And uh, so we, we had a lot of work to do in Mexico, for sure. We do. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Uh, Maria, what is the level of, uh, of number of, not number, but statistic of women on Yeah, board? we had the, the latest numbers, 11% um, of women participation in equity uh, capital markets and 13% uh, in debt capital markets. So still very, very far, far behind. Uh, and uh, we need to, to work uh, very closely and, uh, and assertively. Uh, uh, towards our goal. Uh, I think I think this uh, effort will definitely help. And Chandy, please tell us about your uh, what drives you to serve on a corporate board. Hey, I'm Chandy, and I'm from Boulder, Colorado. As you can see from admission, like that, is there any doubt? Oh, that passion is an inherent part of my job. I lead a nation. Keep talking. Wait, wait, I lead wait. a nation. Sorry, can you hear me? It's not quite uh, not quite uh, synced with your picture, but that's okay. Keep talking. Okay, so I lead a nationwide nine one one mission critical tech business, governed by the Department of Homeland Security and the FCC. So I'm always looking to innovate in our regulatory environments to improve citizen safety to support every one of us right here uh, while balancing enterprise risk. Mm -hmm. So remember 911 is the first line of defense. On the flip side, I'm a PNL owner of the business and I've been I've had the privilege of working with a private equity board for the past several years for a very successful ex exit. Applying my strengths in governance, oversight, and building high performance teams. And then my passion, the other passion is to give back to the community. So I founded and chair a nationwide nonprofit for female 
first responders who suffer a very high percentage of PTSD. Oh my goodness, yes. And interestingly, the last thing I share is that the impetus to begin my board journey was a recent award as Outstanding 50 Asian Americans in the US in Business. That Excellent. basically gave me that mindset to maybe I need to share a lot of a lot of all this information and knowledge that I've gathered over the years and pay it forward. So basically, if I have to, you know, in, in, as a bottom line, my goals and passions are to deliver successful outcomes for organizations while providing sustainable and equitable opportunities for all notably women and minorities. Well, I all think, these uh, are transferable to public board service. Absolutely. And I think our audience uh, um, understands and, and is impressed by the backgrounds of all of you and your 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 desire, your uh, forward thinking to serve on corporate boards. And interestingly, you brought up nonprofit, Shandy. Uh, I'm the author of two books called Winning the Board Game. And uh, by the way, I featured Irene Chang Britt in, in, in those books. And uh, uh, interestingly enough, 85% of the women in the books who told, and there were 113 in the two books, who told their story of how they got on corporate boards, they, 85% were recommended, which is the only way to get on corporate boards, be recommended by someone who knows you. They were recommended by someone they knew on their nonprofit board. And the beauty of serving on nonprofit boards, besides um, advancing the, the mission of that board, is that many board members see you in action and are impressed by you where they might not see you in action uh, at your business. So yeah. uh, I have a thought, uh, have any of you, I know all of you serve on nonprofit boards as well as uh, as very business corporate careers. Have you experienced uh, being recommended by a board member of a nonprofit by any chance for boards? Well, not yet, <laughs> but yeah. expect it can happen. Definitely, definitely. Or, yeah, for well, me, it was the other way around. From a public board, recommended to a nonprofit, which is actually Junior Achievement, which I guess most of you know. So I'm also a member of Junior Achievement Mexico, and it was the other way around. I got recommended on a public board for the nonprofit board. Very interesting. Well, certainly serving on nonprofit boards as well as corporate boards uh, helps you become a very well-rounded executive and uh, understanding on the nonprofit boards uh, how the boardroom operates. And it's a valuable background for your credentials to serve on corporate boards. So most women do serve on nonprofits uh, that we, we know and we talk yeah. to. And uh, their next step is uh, corporate board. So Irene and Maria, could you... Uh, could you elaborate a bit? I mentioned that most potential candidates are recommended to boards by someone they already know, which is why we, you know, train our women in our workshops about how to articulate their experience for boards and how to strategically network. What have you seen uh, these days about who recommends whom uh, for corporate boards? Um, I'll start in, Maria, if that's okay. I, I mean, that's the, okay. the opportunities can come from anywhere, right? And so the recommendation might be somebody that you know very, very well, might be from a not-for-profit board or your workplace, um, but it could be from anywhere. My first board came because I did a speech, a keynote speech, um, and met a couple of the CEOs in the audience. And two years later, one of those CEO chairs called me and said, I need you on my board. Um, never would have thought, but I think your point is that people have to know you, what your intent is, what your skills are, having a good elevator speech prepared to make sure that you are putting your name out there is absolutely the right thing to do. Maria? And, and just uh, to complement that, um, aside of visibility, that it's very important that you do for yourself, you know, kind of making yourself um, you know, visible for others to understand what you do and what you're good at. Um, promoters are a very important part of it as well. So people that would uh, talk about you when you are not there and recommend you um, for, for, for positions. So maybe those um, no, no companies or boards do not know you, but if a, if a promoter or a person that would be not, even, I mean, could be your mentor or not, um, 
you know, gives the name, puts the name on the table, they will, they will, they will listen. So promoters, men promoters are very important, at, at least in Mexico. Uh, and visibility, of course, for yourself, it's very important as well. Yeah, I think uh, absolutely right. And and, and and promoters or allies well, can I add a comment then? who champion women for boards and for advancement in their careers. So uh, well, I'd like to add a couple of quick comments. One is, uh, I think one of the big. Oh, gosh. Yeah, One of the biggest learnings was the fact that, you know, recruiting male allies to my board has been tremendous. And the other thing is you get a lot of visibility. Um, I have like T-Mobile, Amazon, Comcast, Motorola, all of them coming to me to ask to help this mission because they love the fact that they're supporting first responders uh, overcome PTSD. Oh, so cool. they are coming to me. So I'm getting all networked into all these large oh, organizations, goodness. which is amazing. A oh, very important point. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes, for someone on a nonprofit board, using the connections or uh, inviting people they don't know to serve on the corporate on the nonprofit board helps advance their own uh, visibility. Well, I'm so sorry that uh, our half hour is coming to a, a dramatic close quickly, <laughs> and uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Maria and Irene for their service on the selection committee and for being on this. Uh, celebration conversation today and uh, taking the time to engage with us because this whole process has taken months. Yeah. We put off on uh, International Women's Day, March 8th, and uh, Irene and Maria have put a lot of work. In <laughs> it was completely worth it. This effort. Well, thank you. Yeah, we think so too. So to see our finalists complete bios, please go to our website. That's 5050wob.com and search our directory for the uh, finalists. And then uh, lastly, thank you so much to our audience for joining today. And we encourage you to continue this conversation among your own communities and your women friends and men friends who are allies and support our efforts uh, promoting diversity on corporate boards. Together, we will reach our goal. We don't know quite how long it will take. We're currently at 29% nationwide in the US 29% of all board seats on public companies of the Russell 3000 being held by women. And um, and in California, because of the uh, law, we have 34% of the all public company boards. But So we still have a long way to go. And I thank you all for your participation and uh, look forward to seeing you on corporate boards in the very near future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks so much.